Hello everyone, I'm recording uh, this lecture to uh, conclude the material that we needed to finish for this semester uh, in uh, macroeconomics course. So uh, what I'm going to talk about today is the uh, determinants of economic growth. Um, as usual, um, just to give a, a, a quick recap of what we covered last lecture. Last lecture, uh, we talked about the relationship between um, unemployment rate and the inflation rate, which is uh, known as Phillips curve. We, we looked back at the original paper, which was published 1985, and we explained how this uh, relationship, which is known as Phillips curve, became very popular in the macroeconomics uh, policy-making framework. And um, we also show how this relationship was questioned uh, during the 1970s with the oil price shocks. Um, and then we explained how the, our understanding of the relationship between the unemployment rate and uh, the inflation rate would change once we uh, include um, uh, the uh, expectations and also once we allow for the uh, uh, supply shocks, once we account for uh, supply shocks. Uh, so this is what we uh, uh, covered last lecture. As I said earlier, what I'm planning to cover today is uh, economic growth, and I'll be focusing on what determines uh, economic growth, what, what we should be worried about, or what we should look at when we uh, 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 try to understand what determines uh, economic uh, growth. So let's start uh, the uh, lecture today. It might be a bit uh, longer than usual, but I'll try to uh, wrap up all the remaining material in, in one recording, hopefully. We'll see how it goes. So, as I said before, um, what we're focusing on today is the uh, economic growth. And uh, it can, a growth is basically the steady increase in aggregate uh, outputs over time. And um, that means we, we're, we're shifting our, our focus from uh, uh, looking at economic fluctuations in uh, the short run or looking at the medium run. And then now we, we will look at economic growth. Basically, we are concerned about uh, what is happening in the, in the long run. So we move from what determines uh, output in the short run or in the medium run, which we covered in the uh, previous lectures, to talk more about what would determine the output level in, in the long run. So um, when we talk about economic growth, we basically are concerned about the standard of living. And when we talk about growth, we basically looking at output per person and we compare this over time and between or across different, uh, different countries. And obviously, because we look at what, hap what is happening between different uh, countries, or if you want to make that co comparison, then you maybe you need to account for differences in price levels and also differences in the uh, exchange uh, exchange rate between different uh, different currencies. But what we'll focus about today is basically we'll look at the um, growth from the uh, production side, when we, which the measure we use here is the outpa output per worker, or you could look at this as output per uh, hour worked. So. Before we, 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 we look at that, we need to understand uh, the production function. I know we, we, we've come across the production function before. We, we discussed different aspects of production, the production function. We explained that uh, the production function is a relationship between inputs and output. So we, on, on, on the right-hand side, we have uh, labor, we have uh, capital, and then that is determined by technology as well. Um, and then uh, how these interact together or how these enter the uh, production process, what, what is uh, the output or the production on the, on the left hand, hand side. So this relationship can be summarized as you see now on the screen. So we have Y equal F, F is the uh, function that depends on the state of technology, as I said before. And then you have two inputs in this uh, uh, production function, which is K stands for capital as, as usual, as we know, and N stands for um, uh, labor. So um, if we assume constant return to scale, meaning if you double your inputs, 
So if you double the amount of capital you use and you double the amount of labor you use, and then after you do that, if what happened to output, that output has been doubled as well. So that's what we call constant return to scale. Okay. However, if you have a decreasing return to scale means if you double, let's say, the amount of capital, then your output increased by less than the double. So that's what we call decreasing returns to capital. In this case, because I change or I double capital, the amount of capital I'm using, the amount of uh, machines, the amount of capital I'm using. And then what happened is that the output, if output was the double, so that means constant returns to capital. But if the output was less than the double, so that means it's decreasing return to, to capital. Uh, similarly, when we talk about uh, uh, labor, so uh, de decreasing returns to labor means um, if you, uh, for example, if you double your um, the amount of labor you use, so if you were using uh, four workers and now you change that to eight workers, so you double that, and then um, what happened to the output? If the output uh, change by less than the double, so that means this is a decrease. This this production function exhibit uh, decreasing uh, returns to 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 labor. Okay, so um, why we, you will see in in a, in a moment why we say that because uh, why we won't understand that because you will see when we plot the uh, production function how that uh, will translate into into the graph and and in, into the slope of that production. Uh, uh, function. So in this in, in, in this way, so now let's just look at the, rather than looking at the output level, we will look at the uh, output per, per, per worker. As we said before, this is kind of the measure we, we will look at. So when we, we look at output per worker, and in that case, we just divide this production function both sides by n, or the number of, of, of labor. So uh, that means y over n equal uh, uh, f, which is, as I said, this is, a, uh, this is a function that depends on the state of technology, which we'll take as given now. So we're not going to assume that there's any change in technology. So technology now is constant. And then maybe at the end of the lecture, we'll see what would happen when that changed. But for now, this is something let's assume is not going to change. And d uh, d dividing the right hand side by n or the number of labor, so that give us um, capital per worker, so K over N and N over N, which is basically uh, uh, one. So moving or going back to the idea now of uh, a production function, which we actually, uh, uh, I think we, we, we plot before production function uh, when we try to uh, uh, drive the, um, the aggregate supply curve uh, uh, from the equilibrium in the labor market. We show that how the equilibrium labor market uh, uh, lead us to or uh, show us where we are in the output uh, 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 in relation, which is the uh, production function. That how we use that uh, use the uh, 45 degree line as a mirror to uh, again to to see the uh, combination between P and Y or the price level and the output level. So we we've seen the production function before. It's not the first time we talk about the production function, but we need to go back to this today just to explain this in a little bit more details. And also, we want to know uh, about what can determine or what determines uh, uh, economic growth in, in, in this case. So increases uh, in capital per worker, that means we we moving along the production function. Just given that in this case, we will have uh, capital in the horizontal axis, so measured in the horizontal axis, and output level Y uh, measured in the, in, on the vertical axis. So any changes in uh, capital per worker, that means we actually moving along the same production function. But if technology or the state of technology, technology has changed, so that means that should shift the uh, production or the entire production function output, uh, sorry, the entire production function upward, if the, there was an improvement in the state of technology, or if there was an adverse technology shock or whatever happened to technology that became worse for whatever reason. So that means the entire production function should, should shift uh, downward. So now from what we said now, so that means um, economic growth, or as we said, the measure we were looking at here is the uh, output per, 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 per uh, worker. So for that to grow, for that to change over time, we could look at the capital accumulation 
and techno uh, technological uh, progress. So basically, when we talk about um, capital accumulation, we, we're looking at um, a, a higher saving uh, rate. When we talk about uh, technological progress, we, we're referring to an improvement in, in technology. So now let's, let's see what, what happened or when we plot the production function, how it looks like. And one of the uh, very important features of this uh, production function is the diminishing returns to, uh, to capital, which we explained before. So that means, remember, we, if, you, if you double capital, for example, or if you double the amount of capital you use, then um, output will increase, but it will increase by less than the double. So in that graph we see now, you see that the distance uh, between A, B, so the change uh, uh, of, of capital on the uh, capital per worker on the horizontal axis compared to C, D, from C to D, again, uh, uh, capital change in, in capital uh, per worker, these are exactly the same amount. Okay. However, the change on the horizon on the uh, 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 vertical axis that show the change in output uh, per worker, you will see that the distance between C and D, so that that distance is actually smaller than the distance from A and B. So as as you add more capital, so basically you suffer or this this sort of uh, uh, production function exhibit. Uh, diminishing returns to scale uh, to to cap uh, diminishing returns to capital. So you, when you, for example, if you double the amount of capital you use, you would imagine or would expect that the amount of of of, of output or output will change by less. And as as you add more capital, that will be less and less. So that is the idea. So in that case, we say this production function exhibit diminishing returns to to capital. So the extra output from a little bit. Uh, more of capital decreases as K increases or as the amount of capital uh, increases. So this could be, as I said, what we what one of the important features of this uh, sort of production function. That's why you see why we plot that production function uh, in that way. So it kind of the slope it takes that way that takes that shape. So it doesn't it doesn't go that way or doesn't it's not like a, a, a straight line where you have the slope is exactly the same at any. Uh, point on that straight line, but now we have um, a, a production function that looks like that, which which show how the slope change as you move uh, uh, across the horizontal axis, uh, or as you add more uh, more capital. So in that case, uh, if we look at the slope, for example, here, so the slope production function decreases as as you uh, add more capital, as you increase your capital. So as you move uh, uh, across the horizontal axis then the slope of that function decreases. And you can see now how to measure the slope of a production function because this is a curve. So basically you need to look at the, uh, the tangent line uh, at each point because uh, as, you, as you all know, the, 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 the slope of a straight line is constant wherever you are on that straight line. But looking at a curve like the one that we're looking at now in the case of production function, so the slope change from one point to another. So to get the slope at any uh, given point, you just need to look at the slope of that straight line that is tangent that just touch that point. Uh, and, 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 and as you can see on that graph now, so the slope of the tangent uh, line uh, higher at K1, when we move to K2, that the slope then become uh, uh, less. So compared to, so it's higher at K1 compared to uh, K2. Um, so just by the way, as we are here, so the slope of the uh, production function is basically, again, this production function, you have output per work on the vertical axis and you have capital per worker on the horizontal axis. And the slope in that case is the uh, marginal uh, product of capital. Uh, so that means the amount by which output increases when you increase capital by a very uh, small amount. Uh, so how much how much gains or how much output you will make or how much output will increase. Uh, uh, that is what is called the marginal uh, product of, of capital. So declining marginal product of capital suggests that it will be difficult to generate sustained growth simply by increasing uh, K over time. So um, so that is not uh, that is not sustainable to if you keep increasing capital and because capital suffers from diminishing returns to, to, to capital. So that means um, as you increase capital, so that means every time you increase capital, you will have 
output will increase but will increase by less compared to uh, the previous time and as you do that more again so that means it is not sustainable it's not going to give you the sustainable economic growth by just increasing uh, capital over time because again it's just the shape that uh, production function looks like again you saw the slope how how the slope change as you as you move uh, as you add more uh, more capital so uh, however if you compare that so just going back to what we uh, we, we referred to first we said for growth to happen we, we're looking at two two factors two main factors here one is capital accumulation so increasing more capital uh, which implies higher saving rate um, and on the other side you have uh, or the other determinant is technological uh, progress so basically you would have when you when you have uh, improvement in in, in technology uh, level and now as i said at that point we said if there is an improvement in technology or first of all if there's a change in capital that means you're moving uh, uh, along the same production function however if we talking about uh, uh, change in technology that means the the production function itself should shift upward if there's an improvement in uh, in technology and that's what we what we see here so this is this to represent an improvement in technology which shift the production function up and obviously that will lead to an increase in output uh, uh, per, per worker for any given level of uh, capital uh, per worker so that that is basically that's what we we talk about when we talk about growth uh, shifting that production function upward means we have higher output per worker at any given level of uh, capital uh, per worker so so that vis that was very important uh, uh, points that you need to know about the production function and explaining why why it takes that shape why it looks like that again just don't get uh, lost in, in in the details just you need to sit back and just see the whole picture uh, the whole picture here we move from uh, looking at fluctuation output fluctuations in the short run now we talk we are talking about economic growth in the long run and what determines that growth in in the long run so again just don't get lost in in the details so what we're talking about here we're talking about two factors we talk about capital accumulation so you, you have higher saving rate uh, again is or uh, versus having uh, an improvement in technology which basically what it does it shifts the uh, uh, the entire uh, production function uh, upward which means uh, or which implies that we would have a higher output per worker at any given level of uh, capital uh, per worker. So what we're going to, to talk about next then, we will talk about um, one of the very important growth models that built on what we just discussed now, looking at uh, the production function, and we'll see what determine uh, economic growth and but first we will assume that there's no technological uh, progress and also we'll assume that uh, the, the the population the the growth is zero or there's no change in uh, 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 population size so now let's look at the interaction between the first determinant which we're looking at capital accumulation now so to understand this relationship you need to understand the uh, relationship between uh, uh, output and capital and uh, output in the long run depends on two relations one the amount of capital determines the amount of output level and the amount of output level uh, of course determine uh, uh, the savings and of course saving in, in, uh, in terms will determine capital accumulation over time so you see this this uh, 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 graph show you that okay capital stock or capital accumulation the amount of capital we have will determine how much output we would have and 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 we, we we said before output is the same as income or equal income so that means it will determine income and since it determine inc it determines income so basically it determines uh, saving and investment and on the other side and that in its turn determines a uh, capital accumulation uh, over time so it's very important to understand this relationship or this interaction between uh, output level and and capital uh, uh, accumulation so the assumptions we we will have here or we look at here as i as i mentioned before uh, uh, first we will assume that n is constant so this n doesn't change it's not changing and also we'll assume the 
The, there's no uh, technological progress. We will relax this assumption later, and then we look at what would happen to output when when we change uh, when there is a, a, a technological uh, uh, progress. But now that means if this if small, just to to uh, 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 refer to the uh, that relationship that sh uh, uh, implies the assumptions we we, we just made. Now, uh, basically, what we have here we have output uh, per worker equal or is a function or depends on uh, capital per, per worker so now we're looking at the relationship between capital and uh, output or capital per worker and output uh, per worker so higher capital per worker leads to higher output per worker so uh, and that is that is the first relationship uh, okay so we, st we first talk about the interaction between both and that's basically we explaining what we said in the first relation uh, higher amount of capital though so more more capital that should uh, uh, determine how much output we would have and that's exactly what this uh, output function uh, uh, sorry a production function uh, is showing us so it, it tells us higher per, higher capital per worker will lead to higher output uh, per worker too so now let's talk about or let's look at the relationship between uh, uh, the output and investment. So uh, remember again how this uh, uh, relationship works. So the amount of capital we have will determine the amount of output, and the amount of output uh, uh, produced will determine uh, obviously income, and that will determine uh, 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 the amount of saving, and then obviously uh, 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 also uh, investment, and then. Basically, that will 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 determine the amount of capital accumulation or capital accumulation over over time. So, looking at the relationship between uh, output and investment, let's just assume that we are in a closed economy. So, we already uh, uh, mentioned that before in many lectures in the past. We we said in that situation, uh, investment or equilibrium in in uh, in, in in this case. Will uh, in the goods market will equal uh, when when investment equal saving and saving uh, has uh, two components: private savings, which is we denote as the capital S, and uh, uh, public savings, which is the uh, taxes or tax revenues minus government spending. So if we assume just for simplicity, let's assume that we have zero uh, public uh, savings. That means. Uh, equilibrium will happen when investment equal uh, uh, saving, which is private private saving. And private saving in itself, we know that from the Keynesian model that private savings is a proportional is proportional of of income. So we can write that as capital S, which is private saving, equal S, which again is small here is the um, uh, propensity uh, to um, to consume. Uh, the marginal proceeding, uh, sorry, the marginal proceeding to save, and that means this is the proportion of income that people uh, use for uh, for saving. So from that we can uh, uh, conclude that the investment equal the uh, s small times y, which is the income level again, which again it tells us that investment also is proportional to output. Okay, so remember, so we 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 coming this way because we want to show the relationship between output and investment because we understand that this relationship between or this interaction between output and capital is based on this relation where we have the amount of capital determines the amount of output and the amount of output produced determines savings and saving also that determines uh, 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 um, uh, investment and that is the, the the relationship here so investment is proportional uh, to output so the higher uh, uh, output we have or the higher uh, the output is uh, produced is then the higher the uh, saving is and of course that means the higher would be the uh, the investment and looking the other way to this moving to the other direction so the lower uh, output uh, is the lower uh, is uh, saving the lower is uh, investment okay so and that that explain the relationship between uh, investment and uh, uh, output. So when we look at the then how capital accumulation happens. So now we, we we think about so when we explain this relationship, we said this interaction between uh, 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 output and and capital start from the relation which tell us that 
the amount of capital uh, determines the amount of output. And the amount of output we have, or the amount of output produced, this determines savings. And of course, this determines investment and capital accumulation. So let's look at capital uh, accumulation and see uh, how we can understand or how we can see, uh, how do we see capital accumulation over time. So now, since we talk about time, then we will introduce some uh, subscript, okay? So the subscript we have here is, uh, so k okay, in t plus one, okay? So in, in time t plus one will equal two components. So the first component basically, which is uh, capital uh, in time t, and also we have uh, delta letter here, which denote the uh, depreciation of that capital. So that's, we're looking at the stock of capital we have, which is basically uh, equal uh, capital in time t minus, you take from that away, you take away from that, depreciation of the, the, the capital has already de depreciation the depreciation rate of capital because uh, when you whenever you use a, a machine so the machine in, in, in its first year uh, uh, it's not going to be exactly the value of that machine is not going to be exactly the same as in in, in the second year or in the third year or in the fourth year so as time goes then the machine worth is worth less okay because it's been used in production and it, it has lost some of its uh, value as well, plus IT, so the investment in, in time T. So if you replace investment by the relationship we just uh, looked at here, we just uh, concluded here in this slide, in the previous slide, which is I is, uh, or investment is proportional to output. So we're going to replace that here using that relationship. And then if you divide both sides by N, because we want to look at, again, capital per worker, um, uh, just building on what we have uh, uh, discussed earlier when we looked at uh, 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 output per worker and the relationship with uh, capital per worker. So what we're trying to do here, we're just trying to get to the same relationship or similar uh, by looking at, rather than just looking at capital, we're basically looking at capital per worker. So if you divide that by N, both sides by N, that you can conclude or you can you can drive from that this relationship or this expression, which is K in time T uh, uh, plus one uh, over N equal one minus uh, delta. And as I said before, delta, this is the depreciation uh, rate the, of capital, of course, and that times KT, so that's the capital in time T over N plus SYT uh, over N. Again, SYT is investment, okay, because we, from the previous slide, we said this is, um, uh, the investment is proportional to output, which is S small S times YT, which you see here uh, on the second term in this, in this expression. And then from there, you can actually look at the change in uh, capital, per worker by just rearranging this. So you would have capital uh, in time, uh, capital per worker in time T plus one minus capital per worker in time T. So that's the change in uh, capital or capital accumulation over time. That will equal uh, S, that small s times uh, YT over N minus delta, which is again the depreciation rate uh, uh, KT uh, minus N. So what does this tell us? It tells us a change, the change in capital per worker uh, or capital stock per worker that will equal saving per worker uh, minus depreciation, basically. So that's, that's the relationship we're looking at here. So again, so this relationship or the third equation here or the, this, this expression is, it tells us exactly what I'm saying now. So it tells us the change in capital stock per worker equal uh, saving per worker minus depreciation. So let's go back to what we started with. Uh, at this point, we say the amount of the second relation here, we said the amount of Y or the amount of output determines savings and how savings affect capital accumulation over time. That's exactly what we're looking at here. So this is uh, how saving uh, or how saving per worker uh, uh, determine uh, uh, capital accumulation over time, which is what you see in the left-hand side in this equation, which basically is capital uh, per worker and time t minus one minus capital uh, per worker and time t, which basically is just the change uh, uh, in capital per worker stock over time equal 
uh, saving uh, per worker minus uh, depreciation rate. Okay, so combining these equations together, you can come up with this uh, uh, expression where you have uh, 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 this again. This again, what you have in the left hand side is is, is changing capital uh, uh, stock, which basically is changing capital from time uh, t to time t plus one. That equal investment during time t. Okay, why? Because we know that investment is again we we, we came from that investment is proportional to uh, output minus uh, depreciation uh, during uh, time t. So if investment per worker exceeds depreciation per worker, so if that uh, 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 the first part of this or the first term of the right hand side expression is greater than the depreciation part. So that means we would imagine or we would expect that uh, capital uh, uh, will increase over time. So we'll have uh, uh, capital per worker or the change in capital per worker will be will be positive. So we'll have more capital accumulated over time. But of course, if uh, if that was less uh, than depreciation, so basically the amount of capital we lose because uh, the, because we use it in the production process is is more than uh, uh, the addition to that capital or through investment. That means obviously we would imagine that the capital or would expect that capital stock will 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 fall. Okay, so and uh, w which is equivalent to say that the change in capital uh, per worker will be will be negative. Okay, so from time t. Uh, to uh, time t uh, plus one. So from this time period to the next time uh, time period. So to accumulate capital over time, what we, we, we need is we need to have more investment compared to the uh, depreciation uh, per worker. So we would need investment per worker to, to exceed depreciation per worker in order for capital to accumulate over time or in order to have a post change in capital per worker over time from time moving from time t to time t uh, uh, plus one so what we have here then we we, we look at that by just we, we we look at what we just explained now but through the uh, looking at the production function so what we see here we have a production function which we explained before we have uh, uh, capital per worker on the horizontal axis and in the vertical axis we have output per worker and we have this uh, red line or this red line is the depreciation per uh, per worker which is the this delta kt over n and uh, we have two uh, uh, two curves here so the first one or the blue one that shows us the uh, uh, production function uh, or output per uh, per worker and the green one shows us the investment uh, per worker so which is the second uh, in, on the right hand side in this in this expression so we have uh, uh, output uh, per worker that is the production function but also we added the two components here which again we we have this line the red line explain the depreciation or the show the de depreciation per worker and the green line shows the investment uh, per worker so uh, and now we have that point where which we denoted as k star over n any any uh, any point before that when k or when capital and output are low investment or saving per worker exceeds depreciation and capital increases so as we move any any point we as we move this dynamic just think about this before that point so we moving toward uh, or across the horizontal axis uh, so that means we have uh, 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 increases or, or because uh, investment is higher than uh, depreciation so that means uh, 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 capital accumulate and also output uh, per worker increases but then after that point so beyond that k star over n what we have here we have k and y or output and and capital are high and then investment becomes less than the depreciation rate and then we move back to this to this point again which is which is that point which we denote as the k star uh, over n so what does this point or what is the significance of that point k star over n here so this this point denote the what we call or what is known as the steady state so the steady state in any economy it's a state in which uh, output 
output per worker and capital per worker are no longer changing. So what you would have here, you have Y star over N is a function of that steady state where we have capital uh, or K star, which we denoted in this on this graph as K star over N. So that point, at that point, so again, any point before, it tells us investment is higher than uh, depreciation rate. The, any point beyond that, it shows that there's uh, investment is lower or less than uh, depreciation uh, uh, rate and accordingly, accordingly capital decreases in the second case. In the first case, when we are before that point, capital uh, accumulated or accumulates or increase uh, over time. So we move toward that point. But if we are beyond that mo point, we basically move back to that point again because capital uh, decreases and so uh, output per uh, per worker given that we know this uh, relationship between uh, capital which we, we which we show in this in this slide here so uh, the steady state value of capital per worker which is the amount of saving per worker that's sufficient to cover depreciation of the capital stock per worker so at that point which we call again that's the steady state uh, in uh, or for for any uh, economy so what is the implication for this what is the implication of what we said now uh, of the steady state uh, uh, case we, we, we explained so what we have here that means the saving uh, rate has no effect on the long run uh, uh, growth um, of output per worker and the saving rate determines the level of output per worker in the long run but then um, an increase in the saving rate will lead to higher growth, but this is something will happen for for some time, but not not for uh, forever. And that's that's exactly what I'm trying to show here. So what we have here, we have a country with a higher saving rate will achieve a higher steady state level of output per worker, and that in on the uh, uh, production function in this slide you would see here uh, moving from. S0, uh, the saving rate to uh, S1, that basically shift up that investment per worker curve, which is the green line here. So we move from that state, from that point or that, that curve of uh, uh, investment uh, uh, per worker uh, where uh, the saving rate is S0 to the second one. So we moved upward or shift upward. And that means we moved uh, along the... Uh, production function so that means we have higher uh, output per worker again we have uh, a, a higher state uh, sorry steady state a higher steady state level and uh, and that again that means a higher uh, output per worker again uh, that that explain the effect of a, a, a country or an economy that is uh, that has a higher uh, saving rate and that will achieve a higher uh, steady state level of output uh, per worker and that's how we show it on on that graph again just moving from S0 to S1 that will shift that investment per worker curve upward and that will result in a higher uh, steady state uh, level of output uh, per worker so if you take that uh, chunk or that that part of the of the function you will see that an increase in the saving rate leads to a period of higher growth until output comes to that point where the the, the higher steady state level is so that's exactly uh, moving uh, uh, moving along that uh, the production function uh, from point where uh, k0 over n we move to k1 over n because of a higher uh, saving rate so in that 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 what the, the the conclusion here or the main point here is that an increase in the saving rate will basically lead to a period of higher growth until we go back to the same point to the the steady state which is now uh, because we have a higher saving rate will be a higher steady state level as well so that means we're moving uh, 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 along that uh, production function just because we have now a uh, saving rate uh, S1 which is higher than uh, S, uh, S0 and if that was combined by a uh, change in, in, in technology so in this case we assume there's no technological progress so what, we've, what we see in this slide is an increase in saving uh, rate on output the effect of an increase in saving uh, rate on output per worker 
assuming no technological progress. But if we change that, if there is a technological progress, obviously that will 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 be a bit higher because again, just learning from what we we we, we discussed before, that means a higher level of the, for the production function itself, and giving that an increase in the saving rate leads to again a period of uh, 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 growth until we come to that uh, point or the new level or the new steady state uh, uh, level. So uh, moving from here, just we we should know that what matters to to people isn't how many is produced it's more uh, uh, how much they consume so basically that's what matters to people is not um, how much we produce or how many is produced it's more about how much they consume which government can affect uh, the saving rate by obviously we, we we discussed this before how much they consume is based on their income or we looked at the consumption function before we know that consumption depends on income and income is, is split between two uh, components which is consumption and saving so saving now or if you save more that means you consume less if you if you if you consume more that means you save less okay because the sum of savings and consumption that equal uh, uh, income so basically governments can change the saving rate if you want to enjoy that period of uh, uh, higher growth until you reach that steady state or the new steady state point then uh, government can change or can affect saving rate uh, excuse me uh, through uh, changing uh, public savings so basically if you remember if we if we go back uh, to what we said about equilibrium we said that investment equal saving and saving uh, actually is two component which is again uh, it's a private saving plus public saving we just to make it simple we assume that public saving is is zero but in reality it it, it it doesn't have to be zero so you don't have to run a, a, a balance a, a, a budget you could you could have deficit or uh, you could have a surplus so in that case or to, to enjoy that we we say okay so government can can affect saving rate through changing their own savings uh, or the budget surplus uh, or having a budget surplus or run bud a budget surplus so where T or tax revenues are uh, higher than government spending or the other way they can uh, 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 using taxes to affect private uh, saving as well so again so you could encourage people to save uh, to save more so the golden rule level of capital so how much capital uh, that's what we call the, the, the golden rule uh, uh, level of capital. So that's basically the level of capital associated with the saving rate that yields the highest level of consumption in steady state. So if we, if we, if we, if we look at this, um, uh, if, we, if, we, if we want to plot that, and we have, let's say, the saving rate on the horizontal axis, and on the vertical axis, we, we plot the consumption uh, per worker so uh, this is basically the an increase in in the saving rate will lead to an increase uh, uh, then in uh, sorry so an increase in the saving rate leads to an increase then a decrease in the steady state so kind of it goes like a, a kind of inverted u-shape uh, relationship okay so uh, basically any point before that SG uh, that point which would maximize the steady state consumption per worker so any point before that uh, or for a saving rate between zero and that golden rule level a higher saving rate leads to higher capital per worker and higher output per worker and a higher uh, consumption per worker but then any point beyond that level which is again is SG here or which we denote as the uh, uh, the, the golden rule of uh, uh, level of capital so we see a higher saving rate still leads to higher capital per worker and output per worker but lower consumption per worker meaning that consumption per worker will move like this will move up with the saving rate until it comes to that maximum point and then it falls back again after after that if you if you increase the uh, saving rate uh, above that so an increase in the saving uh, rate leads to lower consumption for some 
time but higher consumption uh, later and that is that is the the idea when you uh, when you save now you basically you're saving now uh, aiming to increase your consumption in 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 the future so so far what we explain now we explain uh, the first component or the first determinant we try to explain what determine growth okay just before we we move to the uh, the, the second point we, uh, with which we'll conclude this uh, this uh, lecture and also conclude the remaining part of this uh, course as well so again let's just take that one step back and look at what we are doing now we we looked at we are trying to look at the determinants of economic growth we started with um, production function again we explained now we we left behind now uh, um, fluctuations in output in the short run we we looking at we are looking at what determines uh, the, the, the the long run uh, uh, or economic growth in the long run and basically we started with the production function we tried to understand more about the production function and we came to this point here where we said okay that means in in, in that case economic economic growth sorry I've just went back yeah, we said that economic growth will be determined or is determined by two factors here. We'll look at two factors, capital accumulation, uh, which depends on the saving rate and technological progress. So which we will discuss now. So everything we discussed so far, first we learn about uh, the production function, explaining, we explain uh, what we mean by diminishing returns to capital. And then we explain uh, the, the, the slope of the production function uh, and how that show the um, diminishing returns of, uh, of, 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 of returns to capital and then we explain also what would happen when we have technological progress which shift the uh, production function uh, uh, upward and that's that's what we will discuss now so the first half or the so far what we, we we focused on what we discussed really in detail is the relationship between output and capital and how capital accumulation can uh, increase uh, uh, output and output per worker and, and how uh, higher uh, saving uh, rate will imply that uh, a higher steady uh, state level and then that means we will enjoy some sort of uh, a period of uh, economic growth until the economy reach that higher point which we uh, which we explained here uh, with w again moving from a uh, point uh, k uh, zero over n which denote the uh, the steady state level with associated with S0 uh, saving rate, increasing that S0 saving rate to uh, a higher level, let's say S1 uh, uh, um, uh, saving rate. That means we will move across, we will move along, sorry, that production function mean up or, or toward the right, meaning that we would have a higher uh, or a time uh, or a period of uh, a growth until we reach that point, which is K1 over n which denote the new or the higher level of uh, steady state level the higher steady state level uh, moving from here then uh, we discuss how that will affect consumption and uh, we, we, we discuss that golden rule uh, level of capital we we, d we we define that as the level of capital associated with the saving rate that yields the highest level of uh, consumption in uh, a steady state so um, so that's that's everything we discussed uh, basically so far. So we looked at the first element or the first determinants when we talk about uh, capital accumulation. We explain how that uh, and, and the bottom line here, or the conclusion here that uh, a higher saving rate will increase that capital accumulation. We'll, we'll, we'll have some growth for some time. So it's temporary. Uh, and then uh, un until we reach that point, which is the steady, the new or the higher uh, a new steady state uh, uh, level and that at that point then uh, that, that, that growth will stop so basically the conclusion here is that sustained growth uh, requires technological progress and we, we saving rates or higher saving rates will, will lead to uh, a temporary uh, change or temporary uh, growth that's not sustainable uh, so for to have sustainable uh, economic growth we need to you need to uh, uh, you need improvement in technological progress and to improve technology or improving technological uh, progress that will lead to larger quantities of output for any given uh, quantities of k and l or uh, capital and, and labor and also that means 
better products, new products, a large variety of products. That's what means what uh, technological progress means. Again, to look at the uh, uh, bigger picture here, uh, we, we, we're talking about uh, economic growth. What determines economic growth? We saw that um, the higher saving rate uh, may lead to some um, uh, growth that's temporary until we uh, reach the new level of the steady state uh, level. And then uh, that's when um, uh, growth end. That is That happened due to a higher saving rate but now moving to technological progress when we have uh, uh, improvement in technology that's basically lead to uh, uh, um, uh, um, more products higher higher quality or better quality product um, uh, that basically lead to uh, uh, larger quantities giving the same amount of inputs labor and and capital and that's why you you would have uh, better products you have uh, new products, you have a large variety of, of products. Uh, so, but the question now, so to, to, to attain uh, sustainable economic growth, you need improvement in technology, you need technological uh, progress, and that's how you achieve uh, sustained levels of economic growth. Then comes the question, and, and before that, it, we, we saw how that happened. We, we saw how technological progress shift the uh, production function upward and that's how we would have a uh, higher uh, uh, output uh, per worker at any given level of of capital and also uh, 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 labor so any given uh, level of uh, input so the question now uh, just to conclude this uh, lecture and to conclude this part of uh, or the final part of this course uh, what determines technological uh, progress. So to think about technological progress, most technological progress comes from uh, as the outcome of uh, firms' uh, research uh, and development or R&D activities. So the level of R&D activities basically depend on how much uh, firms invest in uh, new ideas, in, uh, in new research, and how that spending on research and development uh, is translated into new products, new ideas, etc. And uh, and to what extent these firms can benefit from spending on research and development because it's very costly to spend on research and development um, uh, because not all the, uh, um, the, the spending will be fruitful. Um, uh, so basically, you have to spend a lot on that. You have to invest heavily in uh, uh, research and development in order to keep that uh, technological uh, progress uh, going and to be or to encourage firms to do that you need to give them the chance to benefit from those new products so that's why you have uh, patents that give uh, a firm that has discovered a new product the right to exclude anyone else from the production or use of that new product for some time. So that is kind of, uh, you give incentive, you give this uh, these firms uh, the incentive to spend more on uh, research and development activities, and that's, that's what drive technological uh, progress. So that's what we, we need to uh, achieve uh, uh, sustainable uh, economic uh, growth uh, rates. And to sustain growth, those countries um, uh, who are at the, uh, uh, um, the advanced economies uh, uh, that are at the frontier of technology, they need really to innovate. And that's, this, that's the difference between innovation and imitation. And that's, that explains why countries that are less technologically advanced often, often have uh, uh, poor uh, patent protection. So the bottom line here to sustain economic growth, to achieve sustainable economic growth uh, rates, you need uh, not just higher saving. Higher saving rates can achieve uh, some growth uh, temporary, so that's not sustainable growth. To achieve sustainable growth, you need technological uh, progress. And for technological progress, you need to sp spend and invest heavily in uh, research and development activities, etc. 
Uh, so that concludes uh, this uh, section. Um, the what we, we just to sum up what we we discussed today. Uh, all what we discussed today, we talked about uh, uh, what determines economic growth. We we learn a, a, a little bit more detail about the production function. Um, 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 about diminishing returns to, to capital. Uh, we, we learn about how um, uh, savings or capital accumulation affect growth and also how uh, the technological progress or improvement in technology that would shift the production function upward and that will result in uh, sustainable or more sustainable uh, economic growth rate. So that's basically everything we, we covered in this lecture. Here's the reading for this lecture uh, in the uh, textbook. So you can read from chapter 10 to chapter 13. And that will conclude the last part, which is related to uh, economic growth. So the next time or the next recording will be basically um, um, wrapping up the whole course together. We'll try to, to, to focus more on uh, revision and how you uh, uh, can prepare for uh, the final exam. And also I will communicate that uh, through uh, Learning Central uh, uh, in, 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 in the coming uh, few days and, and weeks. I'll be, seeing, I'll be posting more detail about how you can prepare for the uh, final exam. Uh, so that's ev everything for this lecture. Um, I just want to thank you for um, your active participation in, in this course, uh, not just during the lectures, also during the, the tutorials. I know we haven't had the chance uh, over the last two week, uh, weeks to, to meet, but uh, I did. I was really impressed of uh, the level of engagement with the, with the material over the, uh, 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 the whole course, the, the duration of the whole course uh, from lecture one people and lecture from week one people engaged well, very well with the uh, lecture material, with the uh, uh, tutorials. And, and I was really very, I was very pleased with this sort of uh, level of engagement. And I hope you will keep this on. I know now we don't have the chance to meet uh, uh, face to face, but I, I will be always available uh, to meet through uh, uh, um, online or uh, uh, by email as well. You can you can send me any question by email. As, as I said, this will conclude this uh, or the last part or the last part what we um, what we wanted to finish in this semester uh, for this uh, macroeconomic course. And what comes next will be basically uh, some uh, uh, short videos that prepare you uh, for the, uh, the, the final exam. And also I will communicate more about the final exam over the next few uh, weeks. Uh, if you have any questions, please, please uh, send me your questions. I'll be posting, I'll keep posting a few uh, short videos uh, uh, related to tutorials and some other materials. So please keep checking Learning Central and your email uh, 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 on uh, uh, regularly. And if you have any question, please, please uh, contact me. Thank you so much. And I'll see you uh, next video recording. But this again, just to confirm, this conclude this course and anything uh, would come will be more about revision and about preparation for the uh, final exam. Thank you so much and hope to see you soon in the future. Bye-bye.